Hello. Well, I'm Dr. Hemant Bantani again. Well, in this corona epidemic, there is one word, one concept, one thinking, one subject, which has been discussed extensively, and that is immunity, immunity and immunity. Everybody is, you know, in WhatsApp or social media is talking about how to increase the immunity. And there's nothing wrong about it because immunity is important. But then I realized that, you know, it's very important for you to understand what exactly immunity is. Because I wonder how many of you really know the scientifically what exactly the immune system is. And this is going to be my attempt today to make it very simple to make you understand what exactly the immune system is. Basically, immune system is the one which protects us against all the diseases. So whenever there is a threat against our body, like the viruses and bacteria and parasites and so on and so forth, so what will happen, our immune system with its soldiers will go and just try to attack, counter-attack, and so that our body is actually saved from getting the diseases. Now, this is a very organized immune system that we have, and you should understand that there are two types of uh, immune system that we have. The first type of immune system is called as innate immune system, and second one is called as an adaptive immunity. So let's go to the first one. What is innate immunity? Now, innate immunity is the one which you are born with. Like that's the first line of defense. So what happens whenever the, you know, anybody, all the jumps will try to attack, this is the system which will always come. So this is not developed. This actually you are born with this. For example, the skin is one of the part of the innate system. Your tears are also part of the innate system. Your acid in the stomach is also part of the innate system. The mucus is also part of the innate system. The cough reflex, for example, is also part of the innate system. So what it does is try to you know, create a barrier between the germ and the body. Uh, and the adaptive immunity is something which is very specific and more complicated than innate. Adaptive immunity is a specific immunity. So let me explain in terms of uh, the current corona. For example, the corona actually makes you sick or it enters into your body. So what adaptive immunity does, it actually makes the antibodies against only coronavirus. For example, if you are you know, exposed to, let's say, influenza, it will make antibodies against influenza. If you are exposed to Ebola, it will make antibody against Ebola. So the adaptive immunity is very specific and it is more effective it is more complex, but it is a specific because it creates antibodies, which is important for that particular virus. So let's see who are the soldiers. I always consider immune system as nothing less than a military in our body. And this is something of amazing structure that the God has made. So uh, if you look at uh, the, this particular picture, this actually shows uh, our immune system. Basically, there are the lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes are connected by lymphatics in which the lymph is a small, is a clear fluid which runs, which carries the cells which are important for uh, immunity. Uh, the bone marrow which you can see on the right side is a very hollow spongy structure which is right inside the bone. Or the bone is hard from outside, it's very spongy. And that is important because it actually generates and produces all kinds of cells. The thymus is the uh, one which is between, uh, you know, the two various bones beneath the uh, make because this is important because your T lymphocytes will mature here. The spleen is also important which you can see on the left side because actually the extra cells which are there are killed so that the spleen actually maintains the balance of the cells which are fighting and there are lymph nodes that you all of you are aware of and there are also lymph nodes in the GI tract which are pairs, patches which are important or GALT. So all these things together will form an immune system so that it can fight against uh, the prevailing threat. Now this figure is very important. I'll not take you into too much of the detail but I just want you to understand that how intricate how you know the organized the immune system is on the left side you can see the name of some cells which you know might appear a little bit odd to you but they're dendritic cells macrophages neutrophils all these cells have a specific purpose i'll just give you two examples for example neutrophil that you can see it actually fights against bacteria and sometimes the pus that you see is nothing but the fight between neutrophils and bacteria now macrophages are the one which actually would grab the germs and that is what it does. Now this is the first line of defense, a part of innate immunity. But if you see on the right side, you know, there's an adaptive immunity which is very specific. Now there are two cells which you should always remember because you will find the, the reference of these two cells in various literatures. Now T cells and B cells. T cells are very important. T cells have about two types of cells. One are cytotoxic, which would kill the germs. And there are another which are called helper T cells. They it has got its own function. 
and B cells are important because it forms the uh, antibodies. And there are certain called as a, you know, which you see the natural killer cells, which will be the first line of defense because it will first go, you know, and just uh, try to create and uh, try to kill the germs. So this is a very short, uh, you know, schematic diagram to try to make you understand what exactly happens. Whenever the germ comes, the macrophage will grab it and it will sensitize both the T cells, cytotoxic, you can see in this figure, cytotoxic cell will kill the germ, while the, you know, the helper T cell that you see on the right side will actually tell B cell that, well, these kind of germs have actually invaded our body. So B cells will replicate and will create an antibody which is appropriate for that virus, which will fit into that and the antibodies will kill that virus. So this takes time, but this is how the antibodies are produced. So make you, to make you understand this particular picture can, uh, you know, you can understand very well from this. The antibodies which are created by B cell for every virus is depends upon the shape of the virus so that actually fits in and actually can kill. So this is how the entire system works. So having understood this, you know, now it becomes very easy for you to understand how the vaccine would work. Uh, look at this figure. In this vaccine is what? Basically, it's either live attenuated virus or a killed virus or a part of the receptor from the surface of the virus is taken and the vaccine is created. Now, when vaccine is injected, the body would just react as if then the virus has come into your body. So the T cells, T cells and B cells, eventually the right kind of antibodies will be created. And there's something called as a T memory cell. So what it does, it memorizes that these are the antibodies which are created against Corona. So in future, when the Corona attacks you, these particular antibodies will again give you protection against Corona. Isn't this a very amazing system that we have? Uh, the another thing which has been going round and round and people I don't know and I am afraid whether everybody understands what herd immunity is. So I am just trying to give you this a, a very good illustration which I have taken from internet is if you can see this particular picture on the right side and the left side up, you can see there are many people who are in blue. Now these are the people, let's say, let's take example of Corona, they are infected, but they are, no, they are not infected, but they are healthy. And if you see there are two in red, they are the people who are infected by Corona, but they don't have antibodies because they, they are actually infected for the first time. Now, if this situation comes, why the lockdown came, why the distancing came? Because if these people are there, if there is a disease which is very infectious like influenza and COVID, then what will happen? You can see on the right side that plenty of people get infected. Now, look at the second scenario, the middle one. Here, some people are, you know, have developed antibodies. You can see in the yellow. And these are the people who have actually recovered from Corona and have developed antibodies, but they are few in number. So what happens that uh, you can see on the right side, the people infected are less than above, but there are still many patients who are infected. Now look at the last one. Here you can see there are many people who are in yellow. So these are the people who have got antibodies and there are majority of the people. So what will happen if you sue in the right side? Most of the people are protected. So this is called as herd immunity when majority of the people are infected. Now it can happen in two ways. Either everybody is infected by virus or the vaccine works. Everybody getting infected in a short time will create a havoc because our health system cannot sustain that. But the vaccine can definitely uh, solve this problem. The herd immunity is created and then we are protected against Corona. If at all it comes again in future. So this is what you have to understand and I'm sure that you would uh, have got a fair idea how the immune system works. So the next question, of course, I'll take in a nutshell that how would you increase your immunity? You are being educated by so many social media messages, but let me be very scientific with you. The most important and first important thing is your personal hygiene. Washing your hands, Corona or no Corona, very important. Then, uh, you know, make sure that you don't keep on touching your hands with the eyes and mouth and nose. That's another thing. If you've got cough and cold, always cover your face. That is also important. Keep away from the person who has been uh, getting uh, cough and cold. That is also very important. And then, uh, you know, uh, kind of a distancing is also very important that you should maintain. So these are the personal hygiene etiquettes which you should always keep in mind and that would definitely give you tremendous protection which you can't even imagine. And whenever you are bringing vegetables or any these kind of food items, you make sure that you wash them properly. So this is about personal hygiene and etiquettes. Most important thing is what should you eat? Now what you eat definitely decide what your immune system would be. And everybody would say that you eat these, eat that. And now let me give you a very overview, a very short overview of uh, you know what exactly you should be doing. 
And I tell you that there is not one kind of food which will give you full immunity. It has to be a balanced diet. So going through very fast, you know, most important part of your immune building is protein. Now, if you ask me that uh, how much protein should I take? General rule of thumb is it's about 0.8 gram per kilogram of body weight. So if you're weighing 50 kilograms, you should take 40 gram of protein. All of us know the proteins are available from pulses and legumes and eggs and all kinds of uh, nuts and uh, non-vegetarian food. So you, there are plenty of things which are available, you know, uh, non-vegetarian and vegetarian sources, both whatever you are comfortable with, but you should take appropriate amount of protein that is important. The fibers also play a very important role and all kinds of you know, spinach and all kinds of uh, leafy vegetables, all types of fruits and nuts. Uh, the pumpkin seeds are supposed to be very good. So shea seeds are very good. So, you know, if all these things uh, you should keep in mind and make sure that it has got a place in your, uh, you know, dining table. That's something which is very important. Zinc. Now, you know, you must be hearing a lot about micronutrients and now it is scientifically proven that micronutrient deficiencies are responsible for the, you know, your immunity going down. So what are these micronutrients? Zinc, selenium are very important micronutrients. Zinc generally you will find in all kinds of chicken and fish, those who are non-vegetarian. Otherwise, those who are vegetarian, the cashews has got a good amount of zinc. Milk has got good amount of zinc. Yogurt has got a good amount of zinc. Almond has got a good amount of zinc and selenium. So you should take this, you know, it's, it's very, very important. Calcium is also very important because if you don't take enough calcium, all of us know the calcium is available from all the fruits, from the vegetables, from the nuts, uh, you know, and uh, you should be taking uh, and all the non-vegetarian food and uh, this uh, is available. The banana is a very rich source. The milk is very rich source. Uh, all of us should at least take 1000 milligram and those the men over above 70 and women below 50 should be taking 1200 milligram of calcium and in general, right? So this is what you should be doing. Vitamin C is also now playing a lot of role and now you must be hearing uh, people giving vitamin C high dose. But if you should take the right kind of vitamin C and the requirement is about 60 milligram per day, all uh, you know, citrus fruits would give you very good amount of vitamin C. Amla, which is very popular and easily available in India, is a very rich source of vitamin C. So whatever you are comfortable with, you should take that. Iron is also very important because if you are iron deficiency, if you are enemy, then also your immunity will go down. You should make sure that you take about 8 to 10 milligrams of iron every day and the women who are menstruating should take 18 milligrams of iron every day. Uh, the iron is available in all kinds of leafy vegetables and jaggeries and dates and uh, some all the non-vegetarian food. Uh, vitamin D is now playing a lot of role and we are finding many people who have got vitamin D deficiency and this is actually playing a very big role in your immunity. So I would suggest that you should be taking at least 400 to 800 IU international units per day and if it is not possible for you to take uh, you know in food or not a proper sunlight then uh, generally it's a non-vegetarian food salmon for example is very rich in vitamin D the eggs and cheese are rich in vitamin D, but if you don't find it getting adequate, your levels are low, you should take the supplement. Same way the B12 level is also very important. Uh, generally, non-vegetarian foods have got B12, but vegetarian, some dairy products, you know, cheese and uh, milk and partly eggs, they would have a little bit of B12. You should be taking five to 10 micrograms per day, and that is important. If not possible through drugs, you should take the supplement. You must drink at least two liters of water every day. This is very important and you should always keep it in mind. Mind you, age and immunity is important because as your age advances now, you know what T cells are. The T cells would go down, their function will go down, their effectiveness will go down and that's why the immunity is down and that's why we tell people, especially during this time, the people who are aged should take care because their immunity is low for the scientific reasons. So maybe your food should be like a rainbow where you know your different colors of Fruits and vegetables are part of your dining table. Uh, the stress is also very important and now there are certain you know, trials and we have a proof that how the stress would affect immunity. Basically it is a dysregulation of corticosteroids which is responsible for bringing your immunity down. So you should not be stressful and you should be positive in your thinking, yoga, music, reading, whatever you love which will take care of your stress, you should do that. But if you are not stressful, if you are happy with what you are doing, I can tell you that your immune status will be much better. Adequate sleep, about six to seven hours a day is also very important. Exercise is important. I am not telling that go to the gym and build your body. 
but at least you know 40 30 30 to 45 minutes of walking every day is also good enough avoid tobacco in any form please that is a very disastrous thing to happen for your immunity excessive alcohol is also bad for your immunity your life should be a routine your life should be balanced and i always say that you know the human body is the biggest and the best gift that you have got from the god it's not less than a temple so take care of it and if you take care of yourself with everything that i mentioned i am sure that you will not be affected by corona or whatever virus will come in the future thank you very much